Good morning. Looks like pretty nearly everyone's already found a seat this morning, but if you haven't, we encourage you to come on in and join us. Welcome to those of you joining us online. We're glad you're here with us this morning. And we're going to stand together and worship this morning. Uh, stand if you can, please. be new to quite a lot of you. Um, feel free just to join in as soon as you as soon as you can.
morning. There we go. <laughs> uh, so I'm just up here, do a couple of announcements. Um, before I started, I just wanted to share a verse, or just kind of uh, from Galatians chapter one. Just let me go grab my phone real quick. <laughs> I've been reading through Galatians uh, chapter one, kind of just this week in my devotions, and I want to just kind of share a verse with you that I've been reading. Uh, and this is Paul uh, speaking to the church in Galatia. Uh, and it's Galatians chapter 1, verse 15. And he says, But even before I was born, God chose me and called me by his marvelous grace. And now Paul's talking about kind of his journey uh, and coming to the faith. And obviously he had quite a wild one. <laughs> but uh, the same applies to us. And God called us all uh, even before we were born to do what we're doing. So important to think about. Um, so just welcome to everybody. Um, if you're new here, if you're here for the first time today, uh, worshiping with us, uh, we'd love for you to connect with us uh, and for us to get to know you better. There's a little connect card in the seat in front of you. Um, feel free to fill that out. Uh, give it to us. We have a little something we want to give you, a little gift. <laughs> so do that up uh, and then just drop it off, I believe, up front. Yes. Perfect. Okay. So a couple things I wanted to announce for this uh, next couple weeks upcoming. Next Sunday uh, at service during 1030, uh, we're going to be doing a ministry fair. And you might be wondering, well, what is a ministry fair? <laughs> so for a ministry fair, uh, we're going to have different volunteers from different programs that we're running here at the church. And we are going to be kind of explaining what we do, um, kind of letting you know where you might be able to serve here at the church. Uh, so for example, for me, I'm going to be here. I'm going to be maybe talking a little bit about youth group uh, and what it means like to help out a youth group, uh, if anybody's interested in that. Uh, but yeah, we run Tuesday nights at 7, uh, we're in middle to high school, um, and so yeah. So that's going to be happening next week on the 18th, and we're going to have, or, yes, <laughs> sorry, it is on the 18th, okay, I just got my dates. Yeah. So yeah, that's going to be happening then, and then the next Sunday, we have our fall fair, uh, so that's going to be happening from 3 to 5, and then we are going to be, I believe, having a service at 6.30 as well. So that's happening from 3 to 5 and then 6.30 for the service. Um, if you want to help out with that, we need volunteers for different things like food, hospitality, all that kind of stuff. So if you want to volunteer for that, um, just get in contact with us as well. We'd love your help out with that. Um, so I believe that's all for announcements for now. I'm going to uh, just pray real quick for kids in the offering, and then we'll uh, head on over to the CE Center. So let's bow our heads, close our eyes, and we'll talk to God. Dear God, I just thank you for this morning. Thank you for this uh, opportunity to just gather together and worship. Um, God, I just pray for the offering that comes in today. Pray that uh, we would use that to just help further your kingdom uh, and just uh, have you lead us where you want us to go. Uh, God, I pray now as we head down or head over to the CE Center with the kids that you would just uh, help them learn more about you, help us to uh, teach them about you to the best of our abilities. Thank you for all this. And I pray all this in your name. Amen. <clears throat> Any more kids to go today? All right. 
feel free to stand if you, if you would like to. If not, please feel free to sing just where you are. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come. I 
Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can come and gather together both here and online just to enjoy your presence. Thank you, Father, how you take delight when we come and worship you, when we come with eager hearts to open your word, to hear from you, to be with you. Dear Heavenly Father, you know the needs of every person that is here and is engaging online. I pray by the power of your Holy Spirit that you would meet each one. May they experience your love, your care, and your mercy. And may we too, as a congregation, be attentive to your Holy Spirit where we need to make a phone call, check in, give words of encouragement, share with what you have entrusted us with to be generous like you are generous. I thank you, Father, for your goodness and your grace. And as we open your word, may you open our minds to hear from you. We thank you that you are here with us. In the powerful name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. A pastor was giving a lesson on uh, the Lord's 20, on the Psalm 23. And as he uh, said the last verse, he noticed a little boy's face kind of frowned. And he said, Johnny, what's, what's going on? What is it that you're a little upset about it? He said, well, I understand having goodness and mercy follow me all the days of my life. I know God is good. But I'm not sure I like Shirley following me around all the time. <laughs> Today, we're focusing on verse 6. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Before we ponder and meditate on this verse, we're going to do a quick recap of what we've learned so far. Because this verse summarizes all the preceding verses. The goodness and love of God are demonstrated in his abundant care and compassion in the previous verses. We have been studying and savoring the beauty of Psalm 23 written by King David. And in this psalm, we discover the invitation and the delight God has for us to provide for us, to protect us as that good shepherd. That we can live a life without lack, a life with abundance, even in the dark valleys as we embrace Jesus as our Lord and Savior. That my shepherd is a personal relationship, a relationship where you are known, that you are dearly loved, a de dearly beloved child of God, whom he takes great delight in. What sets Christianity apart from all the other religions is this personal relationship with Jesus. God, in his compassion and love, sent his son so that we would lack nothing. And this psalm testifies that our relationship with God is personal, it is safe, and it is permanent. Keep company with Jesus has been the theme of this sermon series. And as that last verse, dwell in the house of the Lord, I want you to keep that in mind. We have been talking about laying down in green pastures, being led to quiet waters, being guided to the right path. We concluded that if we allow Jesus to lead us, it brings renewal and restoration. We live in a chaotic, changing world 
where there are lots of voices to lead us astray, to keep us busy, to keep us distracted, and at times to confuse us and overwhelm us. And this invitation to follow Jesus, to allow him to lead you to rest, to keep company with him, is all about you getting out of the chaotic, busy, noisy world and to be restored. In a world where your worth is measured by what you accomplish, where your success is measured by what you make, the amount of your belongings, the number of followers on social media, Jesus is saying, no, that is all wrong. That will not bring you satisfaction and significance. In fact, it will bring you nothing but stress. All that striving, comparing, and stressing is not good for your heart, your mind, your body, your soul. Keep company with me so I can renew your thoughts. I can restore your heart, your mind, your soul. I want to renew and restore you. That's what it is to keep company with Jesus. And when we keep company with Jesus, that we are strengthened for those dark valleys when the hardships and the unknown of life come our way. The darkest valleys become brighter because we are walking with the light of the world. Some of the different translations say the valley of the shadow of death. Well, for there to be a shadow, there must be light. As we keep company with Jesus, there is peace and there is power when we walk through those dark valleys. When Jesus told his disciples in John 16, verses 32, 33, he said, there is going to be a time when you will all scatter, when you will abandon me, but I will not be alone because the Father will be with me. Jesus said, I have told you these things so that in me you will have peace. In this world, you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. We know we live in a broken, fallen world where we face hardships of disease and death financial, relational, and emotional distress, that there will be mountaintops and there will be valleys and there will be times in between. The good news in all of this is that whatever we experience, wherever we are, we are not alone. That God has not forgotten you or abandoned you. Jesus conquered sin and death so that you wouldn't have to do life on your own. That you wouldn't have to face all those difficult things on your own. That he's right by your side, holding you up and cheering you on. That his peace and his power is available to you. The other conclusion we drew from this psalm is that there are bounty and blessings when you keep company with Jesus. That verse, verse 5 that we talked about last week, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Lillian Trasher was an American-born missionary who founded the first orphanage in Egypt in the 1900s. Mama Lillian, as she was known, cared for over 10,000 orphans in her lifetime. And the or orphanage is still in operation today. In the 1940s, during World War II, costs were soaring, supplies were limited, the entire country was suffering. In the orphanage, the children's clothes were in tattered, and they often went hungry, eating only half a cup of lentils a day. Mama Lillian was getting very concerned for her children. One night at supper, she announced 
that all the schoolwork and chores would cease for 24 hours so everyone could pray for God's provision. The following day, Lillian received a telegram from the American ambas ambassador to Egypt requesting to see her immediately. Lillian went with no idea of why he would want to see her. The ambassador told her that there was a ship, a cargo ship, that was bound for Greece. But since Greece had been fallen to the Germans, this Red Cross ship carrying relief supplies was ordered to dump all their supplies and head out to sea immediately. It just so happened that on that ship, there was a young Scottish sailor who knew all about the orphanage. And he begged and he pleaded, no water, he begged and he pleaded with that captain not to waste the supplies, that he knew of an orphanage. And he knew about this orphanage because his mom's daily prayers. So the ambassador, when he was telling her about this, he leaned in and he said, Lillian, by any chance do you need any supplies? He said, we have 2,600 dresses, 1,900 sweaters, 19 pairs of pants, 3,800 blankets, 1,100 towels, 700 kegs of powdered milk, 1,200 sacks of rice, and the list went on. You can imagine, as I'm imagining, because when I talk, I picture things, Lillian burst into tears. In the middle of war, God had prepared a banquet table overflowing with abundance. God heard her prayers. God hears our prayers and knows our needs. My need was water. Thank you. And takes delight in overfilling our cups. Lillian knew that, and she taught all those beautiful children that. That in the middle of this hardship, in the middle of their own suffering, to stop and to pray. And in it, they received this banquet full of abundance, overflowing with abundance. God hears our prayers and knows our needs and takes delight in overfilling our cups. God sent his own son. The son sent the spirit. God dwells among us that he overflows our cup with his presence. He anoints us with the oil of his spirit. Our cup overflows with the power of the Holy Spirit, anointing us with love, joy, peace, hope, strength, and power. The psalm concludes, Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. David experienced the goodness and love of God. Some translations use the word mercy throughout his entire life, from when he was a shepherd to fighting Goliath to engaging in battles, from running from Saul dealing with hostile relationships within his own family and his kingdom. David could look back over his life and say with confidence, God's goodness and love followed him all the days of his life. That whenever David went, the Lord was with him, pursuing him, chasing him with goodness and love. We see that at the very beginning of creation, how God takes delight in being with his people, showering them with his goodness and love. 
dwelling, being with his creation has always been his goal. We read in Genesis how God walked with Adam in the cool of the garden, that he was dwelling with him. And this beautiful relationship was broken when sin entered the world. But God made a promise to restore that broken relationship through Jesus. And we see how God relentlessly pursued us, that his goodness and life love chasing after us. The goodness and the steps that we take and his mercy and love in the stumbles we make. The goodness and love of God are demonstrated with his abundant care and promises. We see in the Bible from the Old Testament to New this thread of God being with his people. That he would reassure them time after time, I am with you. Joshua 1.9, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord, your God, will be with you wherever you go. That was a verse that... God told Joshua, who was afraid to go as his mentor Moses had died. Moses, he knew, had been with God. And God was reassuring him, just as I had been with Moses, I am going to be with you. Friends, God desires to be with us, to lavish us with his goodness and love. That even though sin entered the world, God continued to dwell among his people. He didn't stop loving us. He didn't stop wanting to be with us. The Old Testament contains many references to God's dwelling place. The tabernacle, the house, the temple. In David's day, it was a tabernacle that God's presence dwelt. And David eagerly anticipated the day that his son Solomon would build a temple for God to reside in. Psalm 27, 4, David says, One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. The temple is a symbol of God's presence with Israel. Here God comes down in a special way to be with his people. It is here that they can approach him, knowing they will find him in the temple. You see, to be present in the temple is to be with God, to have access to him, to be able to lament, praise, thanksgiving. To be ever dwelling in the temple means to remain permanently in God's care, his presence, and his security. Therefore, dwelling in God's house is an experience of blessing, honor, and protection. God's goodness and love came down to us with Jesus. We no longer have a temple but God himself so that everyone can have access. In John 1 14 it says Jesus came and made his dwelling among us. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only son who came from the father, father full of grace and truth. We have seen the dwelling among us. And then Jesus sent the Holy Spirit to dwell among his people. Ephesians 2, 2 says, And in him too, you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his Spirit. In David's day, people, if they did not live right in Jerusalem, had a long way to walk to the temple because that's where they came and worshipped God. 
and they would take these pilgrimages to get to the temple and often they could be hard and difficult to get to. And yet they had this desire, no matter what the cost was, to come and worship, to be with God. And then God sent his son so that everyone would be able to experience his presence. That there would be no limitations. That there would be no hardships for people to come. That it wasn't just for the Jews, it was for the Gentiles, it was for all of us. And then when Jesus was leaving, when he was telling his disciples that he was leaving and they were so distraught, he told them that it was good for him to be leaving because he was going to send his Holy Spirit. You see, they were used to Jesus' presence. But when Jesus went away, he was no longer with them. By this, Jesus meant the Holy Spirit would always be with them. And him, you two are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. That we see the blessings, the extravagances of God, that he would choose us to come and live in, to dwell with us. And then we look forward to that future hope that God will dwell with his redeemed people in the new creation. Revelation 23, 21, 3 says, And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among his people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. In this verse, verse 6, to dwell with God is an image of eternal security and ongoing relationship. Psalms 23 is all about that dwelling. It's all about the blessings of keeping company with Jesus. That as we keep company with Jesus, there's renewal and restoration there is peace and power. There is bounty and blessings. And there is love and life for all eternity. That King David, with all his riches and power, he only wanted one thing, to dwell with God. To dwell with God was above everything else. That he knew that is where the fullness of life is found. He knew he experienced the goodness and love of God, that he lacked nothing. It says in Psalms 36, this is beautiful again, verses 7 to 9, he said, How priceless is your unfailing love, O God. People take refuge in the shadow of your wings, they feast on the abundance of your house. You give them a drink from your river of delights. For with you is a fountain of life. In your light, we see light. David had this passion to be with God that he experienced and embrace what it was to dwell with God. And the question we have to ask ourselves is do we have that same passion? Are we dwelling with God? Are we keeping company with Jesus? And what does it mean to dwell with God? What does that, what does that mean? How do you do that? How do you dwell with God? Well, let me share a few things. To dwell with God is simple. It's acknowledging his presence and activity around us. In children's ministry, we would call this God sightings. That we teach children when they're younger to look for those God sightings. Where do they see God's goodness and love and his mercy? 
and there's talk about a sunset or a rainbow, a pony, a dog, chocolate cake, swimming, kindness, extravagant gifts. That to dwell with God means that we are looking intently to see where God is, to see those God sightings, and then to appreciate and thank God. To dwell with God is to be a part of community of faith, to come and gather like what we are doing today, worshiping and lifting up his name, that we are dwelling, he is here in our midst. And when we're worshiping, it's not that we're forgetting all our troubles, but we are raising them to the one who provides and protects. Worshiping is remembering that God is with you and for you, fighting on your behalf. Worshiping is remembering you are not alone as you look around and see other people. That's another form of dwelling. To dwell with God is serving and being generous with what God has entrusted you. That we are to share with others the bounty and blessings that comes from being with God. That our cup overflows from being with God and we are to share in that goodness and love with others. That's part of why we're having a ministry fair so that other people can experience what it is to connect and serve, both inside the walls of the church and outside. That's why we're engaged and we've got your back and neighborhood works so that we can, as we're serving and as God is dwelling in us, those people who have yet to meet Jesus, who have yet opened his word or heard his good news, sees you in him. That as God dwells in you, people see his face. So the question to ask yourself today is, how are you dwelling with God? How are you intentionally keeping company with Jesus? I want you to know that that is God's greatest desire and delight, that he has given us everything, that he gave his one and only begotten son so that we should not perish but have eternal life. Jesus said, I have come to give them abundant life. And when we dwell with God, we experience that life. We experience that abundance. We're experiencing it, and we dwell among other people, going about our everyday work, our family life, our school work, our work in our communities and at our vocational jobs. As God is dwelling among you, he, in fact, is dwelling among all those others who have yet to come to know him. He has given us everything so that we can dwell with him. And I pray that you won't put that off, that you will recognize that abundant life that comes right today, not just for eternity, but today, of dwelling with God. May you have that confident hope and trust that when you keep company with Jesus, your cup will overflow in so many different ways. And that as your cup overflows, that you will be a blessing to others. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, that we thank you that we can have put our hope and our trust in you because you are so 
faithful God, that we look from the beginning of time how you relentlessly have pursued us in a relationship with you. You don't make us God, it is our choice, God. But you follow us with your goodness and your mercy and your love so that we will accept the invitation. Accept the invitation to keep company with Jesus. We thank you, God, that in him we can find renewal and restoration, that we can find peace and power, that we can find bounty and blessings, and life and love for all eternity. Thank you, Father, how you desire to dwell in us. We give you all the praise and all the glory in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Let's uh, stand together this morning and just affirm um, our beliefs uh, in, this, in this worship song. i 
God dwells with you. Have a great week. God bless.